Hey, welcome back guys. This is a quick video. Well, might not be too quick, but this is a quick video of how to install the EPS rack into a Honda Element. Um, uh, first things first, I get a lot of questions uh, why I took this out of the car. Um, here, I'll explain why. <clears throat> so I converted back to hydraulic power steering um, for pretty much one simple reason. So with the new turbocharger, I have a four inch exhaust. The motor on the EPS unit sits like right here. So the, and you can see the exhaust is sitting there. So this is the main reason why I couldn't run the EPS in the car anymore. <clears throat> Does it suck? Yes. Will I have power steering? Maybe I'm thinking about doing the column power steering unit. <clears throat> Uh, also, I made my own little uh, drop-down bracket um, for the inner tie rod, so it drops it down about an inch, inch and a half, for more clearance for the downpipe. I don't know if you can see that, but we should have enough clearance for the downpipe, or well, the exhaust. So that's the reason why I took it out. Did I want to? No, uh, but I just had to. So on with it. So here's, uh, here's how I did it in the oven. It was working perfect, but I just couldn't use it. So how you mount it? How I mounted it was, I just took two pieces, well, I mean, I kind of cheaped out. I could have just went and got a three inch piece of, block, of aluminum block and just drilled some holes in it and called it a day, but I had these laying around, so I just drilled these out. So these are stacked together, three inches rack simply just bolts right on top boom boom and then that was just another piece of steel i had there i mean with it all with it all bolted together i mean it was it was solid it wasn't moving anywhere so i believe that <clears throat> will be a good option obviously you could do it a different way get a bigger piece of a bigger piece of block do the whole thing but that's just what i had laying around here um other thing you'll need to do is where this where the input shaft or whatever you want to call that enters the car you'll need to notch out some of the uh, uh firewall it's just a little piece but it's hard to explain where how why without you just putting it in the car and being like okay i, I need to shave that part another tip is this is this is the, the column u joint so um i couldn't get this on in the car without someone being in the car and guiding it pretty much at the same time so i had my wife um guide it at the same time it was it was near impossible so that, that's a good tip that you're probably going to need um so that's that's mechanically how it all how it all i mean just pretty much gets bolted in it's pretty simple um it's really cool because it's just so it looks really minimal when it's in there and you'll get rid of all your hydraulic power steering stuff so it's super clean now on to the electric portion of it so i have a honda et in here from from honda <clears throat> let's see simple things are you'll have uh three connectors this connector right here is for the actual motor i just cut it so this connector right here will be the actual motor um, portion of it so it's right it's right uh, there I had to cut it to take it back out of my car um, this will be grounded to chassis and this is um, a straight to your battery um, I think I used a, a 60 amp just kind of a get this off a 60 amp um, amp install kit was right here and that just goes from there straight to your battery. So those those two are taken care of. Here's the more complicated part, not very complicated, but kind of complicated. Um, so here's, here's the connector you'll be using. So technically you only need three of these wires. You'll really only need to use <clears throat> uh, these three wires. Okay, and I'll explain what they, what they are. So, Let's see if I could do this one-handed. So this wire right here, this, 
corner looks like a yellow wire off of the APS unit. Okay, this yellow wire is going to go to connector A. So that's your gray connector in your car on pin three. So that's what this is. It's just out of the car. I'm not running this harness anymore. So this is connector A. <clears throat> that's connector A. And you can see the third pin over is a yellow black. So you'll connect that to this yellow wire going on the corner of that one. That's the first connection. Second connection is going to be pin 18 of that same connector. So pin 18, and again, looking at the back side of the connector, so the back side of the connector, not, not the front, the back side, so pin 18. There's pin 18 right there. So I would say this, the center cavity, fourth one in from the right. You're going to connect your which one was it? This green wire. So it is. Let me get this out of here. So it's this. That fourth one over. You'll be connecting that wire. So I mean, I just. It's not green anymore, but this wire will be connected to. VSS out pin 18 so there's two down <coughs> this blue wire you can see it on the second one over blue wire this one right here this will be connecting to the connector E on the PCM which is part of the dash harness so it's not out here but I can show you where it's at so this will be connected to the engine RPM right here. So connector E, which is white, pin 25. Again, on the back side. So it'll be a blue engine RPM. That's where that one will go. Let's go take a look real quick where that goes. <clears throat> so this is the other connector that's sitting inside of the car which was, um, remember the back side of this connector? Let's see here. Right there. I don't know if you can see that. So that's the pin you'll need to get for the engine RPM. So those are the only three wires you will technically need to get this up and running. Um, and it will work. I highly suggest you um, solder your um, joints or pull back the wire and crimp directly to the wire. Don't use T-taps. T-taps did not work for me. I had a huge, huge problem with T-taps. Um, with this engine RPM, <coughs> it wasn't seeing engine RPM. So huge, huge problem. Um, I ended up uh, figuring it was just a connection issue. It was really weird. Just wasn't just a good enough connection. But here's the cool part. Here's another cool part. So if you take this wire right here, this, uh, let's call it a gray wire, or um, that corner, corner wire, if you connect this wire, okay, to the DLC terminal, so your OBD2 connector to pin 14, there should already be a wire there, so just splice into that number 14 wire. You'll actually get um, data list from a scanner. If you have a scanner available and it has um, options to use to to get an electric, electronic power steering option, it will actually give you all data, all the data you'll ever need. It's super cool. I actually used that to diagnose the problem. Well, why mine wasn't working initially. Um, this is the steering angle sensor that's on the rack. I hooked it up because I thought it was really cool that I got that DLC connector and I could see all the data. I went ahead and hooked it all up. Um, so these are all the wires. This is just the same. This wire right here is the same here. I just shortened it, shortened it up a little bit. I cut it and shortened it. And this connector simply just goes 
right here, right to there. So bam, um, and that is it. I hope this helps out a lot of you guys and answers a couple questions if you ever have any. I hope this did answer some. Um, I didn't want to take it out again, but I had to. It's just uh, wasn't working for my application. Um, but yeah, there's a, there it is, and um, there she is. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but she's getting there. And uh, until next time, thanks.